Let me show you in the next subsection very briefly how you do operations on heaps. And this again will be, I really zoomed through this and the videos do it in much more detail with full Java code and so on, uh, if you want to see it in a bit more detail. For insert, uh, let's just look at our example and, and do one. If I want to insert a new element in the heap, let's say we insert 86, 68, Because of the shape constraint for the heap, there's really only one way, it, one place in the heap where it can go. And that's here as the next uh, leaf, uh, as the child of 40. That's the only place it can go. And then we basically have to repair the shape to look like that. There's no other option, and that's what makes it easy. But of course, uh, this violates the heap order potentially. Like in this case, uh, we don't have this. Um, let me get rid of the blue part. Um, we have a violation here in that we don't have the parent be bigger. So what do we do? We swap those two. So let me do that briefly. The 40 moves down, 68 moves here. Now we have another violation here, right? This also is in the wrong order. So we have to do it again. Again, we have a violation, so we swap it with the parent. And if we do that here, we have the 66 down here. And then the 68, the new element, is up here. No. I want that black. No. OK. <laughs> Try again. I'll do it later. Uh, and that, that's OK then. Now the order here is the right way. And the order down there is also the right way. Now notice that we can never create problems for the other branches of the tree. Because we previously had, let's take for example this one. We previously had here a value that was smaller than 66. And we replace it with something that's even bigger. So we cannot create a violation in the other branches. So all we ever have to do is swap up on the path towards the root. And because that's bounded by the height, and the height is uh, logarithmic in n, that will be the running time in the end. So we do this at most uh, height times. OK, so that was insert. Um, let's suppose we want to remove something. And uh, maybe we can start from this one. Uh, OK, sorry, this is uh, a little buck in that software. We can't delete arbitrary things, but we can delete the maximum. That's the key other operation that a priority queue is supposed to support. So let's try that here, and I'll, I'll clear up a little bit with these things. Surgical precision is needed. Ah. I really want those black. All right. So we can delete the maximum. We already know where the maximum is. It's in the root. So uh, deleting it is not so, not so hard. You just <laughs> remove it. But now we have a gap in the tree, so we can't really leave it like this. It's not a viol uh, valid heap. So we have to put some element there. Now again, the heap shape means if I want to shrink the heap by one element, I know what shape it's going to have to have. I have to take away this element in the last layer, the rightmost. So what can I do? Well, let's just take this element and stuck it in the root. And I wish I had left a copy 
of the initial state. So let's uh, add that here. And again, my red numbers. Okay. They'll come haunt me. I'll do the fix up later. So uh, that was the original state. Now we put the 40 up there. Great, so the shape is fine, but we screwed up the heap order, so we can't leave it like that. Now, in this time, uh, this time is a bit more tricky because we have two children and we could have screwed up both, like in this case. There's a violation on this side and on this side. And uh, if we're not careful, we create follow-up problems. So what we have to do is first find the larger of the two children. In this case, 70 is larger. And so among those three, clearly 70 should be in the root because it's the largest of the three. And so we'll do that swap. Okay. Easy. So 70 goes in the root, 40 goes down here. Now we have repaired this one. And that also means all the left subtree will be fine because we haven't touched it. But the right subtree might have the same problem recursively. So this, the topmost, of course, is fine. We just made that so. Uh, but we could have violations here. In this case, we only have one violation, but we could have both. So we do the same again. We find what's the larger of the two children and swap that with the element we just moved down. Uh, okay, there's a bug in the software where sometimes if you do things with the pen, it doesn't register. Okay, 40 is up here. No, sorry, it was right. 70 is up here. What am I doing? And then I swap the 55 to this place and the 40 moves down. And then I'm done because I've reached the bottom layer. There can be no more violations further down. That's the, the key operations in a binary heap, insert and delete max. I'll very briefly comment on construction from scratch. If you have a list of elements already given, if you have n elements that you want to build a heap for, you can do it by inserting it one after the other, but there's a faster way. So if you do it one after the other, we haven't talked about the height of heaps in very much detail, but uh, I mentioned that it's logarithmic in, in n. It's basically log n plus 1. Uh, so you will get uh, a running time in total for the n inserts of n times log n. Uh, and instead, uh, there's a smarter way to do it, um, which is a little, a little tricky. So let me try to um, just draw an example. Um, we take our elements. And we first build, out of three elements, little heaplets, tiny heaps. And we do this all across the way. And these are built like standard heaps. So um, always the largest of the three elements has to go into the root. OK, so now I'll just draw this uh, box around them to indicate that these are little heaps. Now, um, it's a bit silly for three elements to do it that way, but I could reuse this same code that we've, the same algorithm we've designed for the delete max by um, just taking arbitrary numbers, putting them in these positions, and then calling on the root this function sync. Uh, that's what we've done here. Uh, I didn't mention the name, but what we've done with the 40 is we let it sync down until it reaches its final landing position. And that's what the 40 did. It sank down in the heap, in this case, all the way down. So we can do that here. We call sync on this one, sync on this one, then sync on this one, and so on. Then we have tiny little heaplets of three elements each. Now we take two of these tiny heaplets and build a ele uh, seven element heap by again adding one more element and calling sync. And the way that this is better than uh, successive insert 
is because we reuse that these are two, two heaps already. And I guess you already see where this goes. In this example, I have to do it one more time. And then I have one big heap containing everything. Okay, I'm running out of space down here. So there's one more call to sync at the top. Now I'm calling a lot of syncs. Uh, why is that any better than doing syncs with insert? It looks like this is not so different. Uh, the key to see why it's better is most of the syncs, half of the sync calls are at the, at the bottom level where you just go one step down. Then from the remaining half is one level up and so on and so forth. So the bulk of the work is done on tiny little heaplets. And uh, you only have a few calls that sync down a lot of the tree. And that's very different from n times insert. Um, let me briefly comment on this and maybe skip the analysis of, uh, of the construction. So the height is, uh, just to define this properly, the height of a tree, and it doesn't need to be a binary tree, it could be some arbitrary thing. Uh, the height is just the longest path from the root to any leaf. We have these levels of elements at the same distance from the root. And we usually start with level zero, then one, two, and so on. So the height could be, um, could be defined as the maximum level or the number of edges on the path from the root to a deepest leaf. So that's the height, in this case four. And the depth again, so all this counting edges, that's the thing you have to remember, and we start at zero. So this element would be at depth two because there's two steps I have to take down. Um, if I uh, analyze how many nodes I can stuff in a binary tree, I sum up powers of two because uh, I start with one, then everything has two children, so it doubles at each step in a, in a complete binary tree. Whenever I go one level down, I double what I had on the previous level. And so if you sum those up, you get the total number of nodes in the first k levels. And if you want to get that to match n, if you want to have space for n items, that means you need so many levels. So uh, I just want to want to have the concrete numbers on the slide. Uh, for insert, what we do is we have this one element that we stick at the bottom, and then it swims up. So for every level that we swim up, we have one comparison, but that's it. For sync, almost the same, but we need two comparisons because we first have to find which of the two children is bigger and then do the comparison if we have to swap. So we need the comparison of the two children and of the element with the larger child. So it's 2H. Um, and for the construction from scratch, you can work out that the total cost is 4N comparisons at most which is better than n log n. Um, and I'll, I'll skip the details. This is essentially what I said before, spelled out uh, formally. Most of these sync calls are on small, small heaps. And if you sum that up, it turns out the overall cost is just linear. That's all on binary heaps. Um, here's a table of the full list of operations for the abstract data type and what running time heaps achieve. That's something maybe uh, to keep in mind. Uh, the key, key information is logarithmic time is what you need for insert and removing the maximal element. Uh, I haven't talked about how to change the priority. You can watch the videos, it's very similar. You can find a node and then change it and either swims down or sinks, uh, swims, swims up or sinks down. And the other operations are not hard, hard to do.